I'm telling you, arguably the greatest gangster rap like rapper from the 2010s decade. Arguably, yeah. That was one of our favorite moments from our live album reaction yesterday to Schoolboy Q's new studio album, Blue Lips. If you guys want to check out the full live stream, it's available to you on Patreon. All you guys got to do is check the pinned comment, and it'll take you directly to the reaction tier. But Lou, let's get into this, man. Serious album of the year contender on our hands. Blue Lips is finally out. You and I have been waiting for a new Schoolboy Q album for the better part of five years now, and we finally got it. So let's jump into this review. The artist performance, Lou, let's get started. Absolutely, man. I mean, Q is, of course, bringing you back to the gritty raps that he had all across his entire catalog, but he's doing much more here. He's giving you confessional hip-hop. He's giving you a lot of introspection, more meditative performances. But within that, I just love that his personality continues to radiate all the way from the intro, mm -hmm. funny guy, where he does the whole Mario impression of, it's a me, it's a groovy, or like just... <laughs> Hilarious to get that sort of comedic value at certain points within the album. Absolutely. Um, apart from that, I love Q for how animated his voice is, for how unfiltered and unhinged he sounds across this whole album. He's breaking rules of song structure. He's really going his own path here. So take me through a couple of standouts performance-wise for you. Well, I think we got to talk about one song on here, and that's Thank God For Me, one of the best songs of the year, at least for 2024. And when I saw this performance on the Boiler Room set and the footage that had surfaced, I'm like, okay, listen, this has to make the album because it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. And what Schoolboy Q does so well on this song is that he's just taking you through a roller coaster. He's rapping with such velocity and such viciousness, and it's so precise. And that's that type of Schoolboy Q that I absolutely Absolutely adore and like you were saying that's not all you're getting throughout the album you go to the next song on blue slides and it's a lot more calm it's a lot more meditative and it's a lot more i would say intentional like almost schoolboy q is speaking to you in the same room and i feel like that's extremely important for the album because q is showing his duality as a rapper on all fronts right like if you're a fan of Oxymoron, you're going to be a fan of some rapping performances on here. If you're a fan of Blank Face, you're going to be a fan of certain performances on here. If you're a fan of Crash Talk, you'll find certain performances on here that all come together for one big melting pot. And that's what I like about the performance is that it is so unique and dynamic all the way through. Even looking at something like Ohio, for example, what's cool is that we're going to talk about this more in the production section of the review, but Schoolboy Q is so well in tune with the production and every single time time you get a beat switch or every single time there's sort of a, a break in the production he follows suit perfectly and his dynamic factor yeah. is at an all-time high on this especially album, on, on that song ohio where he's sort of playing with his pitch and distortion um giving you those creative vocal effects that worked out really well a big highlight for me performance wise from him um would be on year in 101 just so because aggressive. you have that bullet fast cadence from q and it sounds like through his delivery that he's frantic and that he's almost like in a hot pursuit on the road in a serious car chase or if someone's running after him like it's that kind of a vibe it's that kind of sort of um, urgency that's brought in by his delivery which is fantastic he also killed it on pop which is early on in the album where he's showing you through his vocal demeanor that he could portray aggression so well and even through all the yelling and the shouting um, he's able to captivate you and really show you how ruthless um he has been in the streets or whatever it is. Absolutely, but there's also another side to Q on this album example in a song like Lost Times where he sounds a lot more down. You know, he sounds a lot more a bit like depressive if that makes sense to you where there's almost like a sadness or tone to his voice that you know, makes you sympathize with Q a bit. And that's what I feel like he does really good throughout the studio experience is that you're always feeling his emotions. You're always kind of like, what's coming up next? You know, what does he want me to feel on the next track and the next track and the next track? So and I, I love that as well. I think that plays into how masterfully he curated the album, to be honest with you, because if you really think about it, he did a great balance of giving you hard-hitting bangers and then giving you the more thought-provoking laid back sort of performances and it's almost a 50 50 split and i feel like that was definitely intentional um to give you the substance and then give you the flair so i really respect that he did that on this album um and yeah bro to be honest with you to me through and through the performance was amazing but i want to ask you this i'm sure you give it an amazing rating as well Absolutely, by the way yeah, for sure. um any blemishes whatsoever in the performance not on his end not on, his, not not on his, his end like so why not perfect 
Yeah, it's a great question. It's just that like perfect would have to be like that upper edge. Like you get what I'm trying to like. It yeah. feels weird to give that sort of score. If you get what I'm trying to say. And like, I, I also like again, if I had to be a stickler, it didn't bother me whatsoever. It didn't ruin my experience listening to the song. But on the outro smile, he he does the singing thing, and it's all right. He's not taking it seriously. You know but what? I saw a lot of people not, actually not, not enjoy a great, the track. Not, not a great singer, obviously, but like. It was cool for what it was. Absolutely. But still an amazing performance all the Absolutely. way throughout the album. Absolutely. All right, you want to get into the content, Lou? Yeah. And speaking with the content, I just want to mention that when he actually started unveiling the rollout for the album, he gave us a little trailer. And within the trailer, he defined Blue Lips. And he had this to say that it was um, it meant speechless, especially as the temporary result of shock or some strong emotion. Definition number two, shocked, speechless, or embarrassed. The crowd gave me Blue Lips. And um, I feel like that was sort of the intent with this album was to shock us, to give us a roller coaster of emotions throughout it, because that's sort of how life is in a lot of ways, where there's a lot of things that happen and transpire that you don't see coming. Well, that's why, like, even looking at the track list right now, like I'm looking at it from, let's say, the one to 18, um, every single song Loki has a part to play within the narrative of the album. And um, I like what you were talking to me about before, because we had kind of discussed, like, you know, did you find any narratives throughout it? Like, what did you pick up on? And you said something really cool, how this album feels like one big balancing act, right? And it feels like Schoolboy Q is walking this super tight line and, you know, kind of, is he going to fall on one end or is he going to fall on the other, you know? And there's certain points in this album that get super deep and emotional. And there's certain points in this album that feel super triumphant and that feels super braggadocious so as a listener myself you're kind of left thinking like where's he gonna go you know there's so many ups and downs within Q's life and he put them into like one track list and that was beautiful for me because we didn't hear from schoolboy Q in the past five years and to be able to get that type of like testimonial style content from the past five years of his life was extremely interesting to me and even him going back to his childhood or even going back to the moment he was born like example germany 86 talking about how his mother was serving for the military and how she had schoolboy q you know in germany and how they came back to the states and instead of taking care of her you know they put her in the projects and well now schoolboy Q is living a life of crime, you know, from an early age because of the circumstances he's in. So it's such a mindfuck of an album from a content perspective because you're trying to always piece like everything together as one as an album experience. And that's why I love it so much, you know, at least for the first couple of listens that I've given. Absolutely. This. And like something that we had said about Crash Talk when it came out is that it was his most mature album. But this definitely takes the reins. I think it's his best written album when you're looking at um, certain highlight tracks within this. One of them being Cooties, where he reflects on just like his improved mindset, his growth in life, the bright future that he hopes his children have, the fear he has of sending his children to schools because of mass shootings. Like, it's really like he's giving you like sort of that father perspective. And it's cool to see that um, he's almost like listening to this compared to something like an oxymoron. He's so separate from the way he portrayed himself back then. It's almost like as much as he's still rapping about being in the streets and sliding and whatever it is, like... It's almost like he's so separate from the man he once but was. That's what's so cool. Which is is really that cool. It, it's really cool because it creates a separation within the dynamic and it shows you the duality of Schoolboy Q, you know, and like Schoolboy Q, the human being, right? And I was also saying this how like the writing's kind of fragmented. It feels like you're taking a rock and you're whipping it at a mirror where like, you know, everything kind of like on the outside of it is all glitz and glam, right? And that's him getting into like the luxury goods and the women and, you know, the lifestyle and the accomplishments as a rapper. But behind all of that, there's so much pain, there's regret, uh, but there's also like a sense of hope on certain songs and one of my favorite songs from a writing standpoint is actually blue slides yes we have to talk yeah, about that once you get through these two verses it's absolutely masterful because when you're looking at the perspective look at the way that he starts off this song okay so this is verse one better climb out of that hole before you fuck up your blessings before you realize that it's over with and start to get desperate keep your mind body on pressure give your time when it's needed no a man gonna be a man if you don't work he ain't eating like this is that type of like schoolboy Q conversation that has put him, let's say, in the top ranks of 2010's rappers. Like, he is an absolute fucking goat when it comes to this shit. And I love to see that throughout the writing. Yeah. And it's interesting because obviously on that song, he's rapping about like the, finding the motivation to keep living. There was a line about like, you know, lost the homeboy to drugs, which people seem to have thought was relating to Mac Miller, especially with the title of Blue Slides relating to the Mac Miller album. But apparently Q came out and said that he's actually rapping about himself through that line. And um, 
what I love the most about the content on that song is that he actually introduces an oxymoron when he says, but sometimes you got to be a deadbeat when the kids got to eat. And he's juxtaposing the idea of being a good father by working hard to provide for your children, but simultaneously being perceived as a deadbeat because when you're out there working, you're not home as much. You're not around as much because you're touring, because you're grinding to put food on the table. So again, I just, I love when he's able to be this thought provoking and really get you to think about the way he's perceived, the way that he that he sort of navigates his own family life and whatever the case may be. You know what's because, really cool about yeah. also because Q for a long time is sort of like he's kept a mystery to his persona, to his personal life for a big portion of his career. And now he's sort of opening the floodgates. Absolutely. And I think it's so sick as an album concept, even on this first verse. Something that I absolutely love. Listen to this, bro. You know, um, been in prison in my own house. I don't know if they noticed. I done broke down so many times. Next time it gonna catch me. I done helped out so many people. They took me for granted. Even started to speak about how like everything he's built in his career has kind of like caved in on him, and now he can't escape the own like the like the own shackles of his of his success and his fame. Like it is such a gripping verse. It's like, do you think that this first verse on Blue Slides is one of the best in his career? Absolutely. Like, I, 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 it's very I, I, hard to find. I, I, like, I, I think it's probably just his best written song of his career. One of them for sure. It's I, definitely I, I, I really there. think so. What's cool too is that I noticed that there's a bit of a connection between the intro and the outro. Um, because on the outro, it's called Smile, right? Yeah. And on the intro, he, 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 he sings Nasty Slut, You Make Me Smile. And of course, on the outro, he sings once again, You Make Me Smile. And I'm like, is this him like embracing an imperfect relationship? Like that was sort of the vibe that I was picking up on. And maybe it relates to a woman or maybe it relates to life as a whole. Exactly. The imperfect, the imperfect relationship of, of life and the events that, uh, that go on in your life. So, um, interesting how like the album almost creates a loop. So really cool shit from schoolboy Q. The reason why, um, it's not going to get an amazing rating for me. It's because you do have songs, for example, like the first verse on Lovebirds where it's a bit dull. It's a bit empty. There's not too much being said. Um, so th there's a, a couple of, 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 of tracks where he's not really giving you too much. Or even something like, let's say, Movie, for example, where it's just AZ that has the two verses and it doesn't do too much. Even the Rico Nasty feature from, like, let's say, a content standpoint isn't too compelling off of pop itself. So, like, there are a couple of instances where, like, they're not bad verses and they're not even mediocre verses. It's just that when you compare it, let's say, to the Blue Slides verses or something like a Germany 86, when you compare it even to something like, let's say, a Thank God for Me and, you know, how braggadocious and confident he sounds on there and how the bars are just absolutely flowing, it does just, like, takes down by, like, one notch. A little if, bit, If yeah. we have to do the so, album. So, uh, you know? we're going to give it a great rating. I think that's fair. We're going to give it a great rating, absolutely. All right, let's go into the features. So... Interesting feature list. A lot of like the usual suspects for a Schoolboy Q album didn't make the cut, but you did get some of them, right? You got Absol on here. You got Lance Skywalker. You got Rico Nasty, Freddie Gibbs. Total of nine features. And to be honest with you, probably the weakest component of this album. I think it's fair to say. It's the weakest component of the album, but I will say this. Once I went through the album experience, I understand why he didn't flood it. And I understand why, like, there was certain features. I don't think, and certain yeah, it's not a case of flooding. I think I think it's maybe a case of curation and, and choosing the right artist, which he did for the most part. I'll say that. Oh, absolutely. Like, example, I want to talk about, I believe it's Lance Skywalker on the outro of Lovebirds. I love his vocals. They feel very euphoric. I love how the production switch happens at the end of that song and how he comes off and he just absolutely closes it off. Um, Rico Nasty on Pop, this was one off the first listen that... I was kind of like taken aback by. I didn't. I didn't not like it. I was just like, I'm gonna have to give this more listens. Finally, I do enjoy it. I love her energy. I love how brash she is, and I feel like she does have like a good match with Schoolboy Q for that verse. For that verse, I agree. I don't like her hook whatsoever. I feel like it was a bit irritating, a bit too repetitive. And what's interesting is that Q delivers the exact same hook earlier on in the song, but it's a bit quieter. Like, it's not, like, delivered as loudly. It doesn't go on for as oh, long. True. Like, it was better delivered from Q than it was from Rico Nasty. But like you said, I do think that she fit on the track. Let's talk about Freddie Gibbs, which is probably the most hyped feature on the whole album. He's on Ohio. He closes off the song. Yeah, I like that he starts off with a slower flow and then gradually picks it up. Lyrically, it's cool. Nothing crazy. I mean, you know, you get your academics this and you get, you know, him just talking his shit. But, yeah, I mean, it, it was cool. It was a cool verse. What did you think? I liked it. I liked yeah. it for the album, and I feel like it added an extra component to Ohio, especially for that song. It's a bit of a lengthier one for the track list, so like maybe if you get a third Schoolboy Q verse, it get a bit drawn out. So I like how 
Freddie Gibbs came in there and was able to save the day. Well, I think, not save I the think day, you but do like, have three Q verses, though, low-key on that song. It's true, because eh? you get two in the part one, and then you get one last one for the part two. Oh, yeah. You're right. So maybe, maybe okay, I'll add one. Maybe if you get four, then you know, it gets a bit drawn out towards the end. So I like the Freddie Gibbs inclusion. Um, talking about Absol on Fu. Um, that's one of my favorite features off the album, if not my favorite, um, you know, classic black hi- uh, black hippie link up. I just I, I love seeing two OGs go out, like go at it on a song like this. It was absolutely incredible the way that he like stops the entire song yes, and then comes stops right the back drums. and then comes right back in right after. But that's like classic school, like that's yeah. classic app soul. Like he's been doing that throughout his entire career, and I was happy to see that in motion. On Easily that song. the best feature on uh, the album, without a doubt. He killed it lyrically. Um, Shout out to Devin Malik, who had two features on the album. You know, shout out Devin. You know, Devin's a good friend of ours. And, um, you know, he's all over this album. And he did a fantastic job, you know, just even with the production credits and what he did with this album. So congratulations to you, Devin. Let's talk about Josie on Lost Times. Um, How did you like the hook? Does a great job, you know, with the hook. Um, Sounded like he made the song go into like a peaceful place, I feel like, when he came onto the track on Lost Times, which was... Obviously, a major fucking highlight from the album. Um, Childish Major on Pig Feet sounded good. He sounded just as charged up as Q did on that song. Um, so that was pretty fire. But uh, who else? Um, AZ Chike takes the lead on Movie. And he's rapping with sort of a very familiar West Coast flow. Um, that's, a, that's a song that I feel like was kind of useless. I, I think you could just scrap that off the album. You think so? Absolutely. I fucked with it, though. Like, I think I'm going to have fun bumping that in California. It's gonna be a fun. It's gonna. It depends if you like that. Type I, of stuff. I, I won't put it on. But if you Anyways. want to, sure. All right. So, uh, what great rating for the feature? I, I, yeah, I was kind of between good or great. Overall, I think that uh, we can go great with it. Absolutely. For sure. Okay, well, let's talk about the production. Oh, bro. baby. This is a this is a serious component about this album. It, it's so fucking weird because it takes you through so many little crevices, and um, if you're not paying attention to this album, especially on the production standpoint, like. You're gonna get lost. You, you really, remind, you're really gonna get lost. You know what it reminded me of on like multiple listens? It kind of reminds me of Cherry Bomb in the sense that you'll get a song like Back in Love that's really hard hitting, really in your face, abrasive, but then turns beautiful. And you have songs like that on Cherry Bomb, for example, like a Buffalo, where it's the same vibe. It starts off really hardcore and then it smoothens out. And you get that on more than one track because on the You're getting album. a bunch of different production switches. So, for example, like you look at something like Thank God for Me, I think it's a great place to start off with the production. <laughs> um, Stupid the pro- beat. Stupid, y- y- yeah, nasty y- y- beat. Y- you have like this euphoric production that starts off the song and then boom, you're getting these crazy horns and drums that just absolutely elevate the production, you know, out of your speakers and then boom, it comes back back down for the second portion of the song and in my head i'm like they could have ran with either one of these beats for the entire time thank god they did it to but me. it was a nice balance throughout the entire track and like that dynamic factor to this production kept me engaged it, it almost the- felt like, like a musical swinging door crazy it was like a musical swinging door because you had like two sides to it and when they went from the chill lounge beat to the chicken head sample from project pat the more triumphant one when they went back to the original beat, they, they maintained the drums from the second beat and they sort of glued them together. So I found that was really well done. But what were you going to say? What other song? Lost Times. The the sample flip from Uncle Lal and DJ Fu on that was so stupid. So stupid. Even that song, like talking about like how dynamic that is. When you start off for the first five, ten sec, like first ten seconds of the song, you think it's going to go into a completely different direction. And then you get this dark sort of like classic uncle lal sample flip and it's just absolutely perfect for schoolboy q to come through and be meditative and to be able to speak his shit on so i absolutely yeah. love that production another as well. one that i loved was the ominous foo which features like the haunting background vocals the creepy piano and some crazy drum breaks bro like it really gave you that uk jungle vibe and i just i love how panicked the instrumental sounds but yet still maintaining a calm tone and i feel like that's what q proved with the beat selection on this album is that he can rap on literally whatever type of production he wants if it's rap rock on something like pop where he's rapping over these punk electric guitar riffs he can fucking do it if you want a more progressive trap beat you'll find that here if you want jazz rap on something like blue slides You'll get that where you where you feel like you're in a jazz cafe with the saxophones ringing off, the violins, the ocean sounds. Like, it's just it's cinematic, it's lively. The the beats are layered. Um, 
and it has this haziness to it. That it this really does. Dreamlike feeling. You know? Absolutely, it feels very euphoric. Like it almost feels like you're in Alice in Wonderland to a certain extent. To be quite honest with you, and um, like Schoolboy Q's version of that, where you're just going down this fucking crazy rabbit hole, and you don't know where you're gonna end up with the next turn. And that's what I love about the production is that it is super unpredictable. So with that being said, I'm gonna give it an amazing rating. Absolutely, the soundscape amazing. was absolutely amazing. But let's get into the replay values. So it's been five years, man. You and I are huge Schoolboy. Q fans we've been listening to his music for the better part of like yeah I think f probably 14 years now probably more or less yeah we started like really like a long time ago with Q's music and to be able to see his artistic evolution over the years is incredible and um I think that I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this album over the next year or even like for the I, I still bump like all of Q's like old projects even to this day you know so I I think this is gonna be a big one for me as far as my replay value goes and we speak often about you know albums in this era coming and going but this was an album that was built to last when you look at the timeless themes when you look at the layered production, when you look at um, the deep messages to unravel, there's so much value for a listener. And again, if you want to have the deep messages to unravel, you'll find those. But if you want to just enjoy some bangers like Thank God for Me and Pig Feet, you have those. You have multiple songs like that. That's why it's a great balancing act. And there's nothing that feels like it was made for the moment. There's nothing that sounds trendy about this album. It was done out of passion and love for music. You could clearly tell that. And um, yeah. He's an album artist for a reason. Not going to leave my rotation anytime soon. I could have done without maybe Lovebirds or Movie, but besides that, bro, like no, I I'm serious? loving like, the track list. Um, yeah, give, me, give me your top three, though. Give me your top three. Give me your top three. Thank God for me, for sure. That's number one, eh? That's got to be number one. I don't know if it's number one. These these three like could be interchanged at okay, any time. Go. Thank God for me, Blue Slides, and I'm going to have to say... Lost times. I think those are going to be okay. the three that I'm going to have. And even like Cooties has been creeping up. Ohio, Foo. There's a couple of these songs, man, where I'm just, what is this? I'm going to you know? go Thank God for Me, number one, Blue Slides, and number two, and number three is going to be First. Very first underrated song. Yeah, First is a great song as well. Um, So listen, I think the replay value is amazing on yes. this album. You're going to have so much fun with it. And if you're a fan of Schoolboy Q, this was Christmas morning. But all right, let me talk about my overall thoughts on the album. Schoolboy Q delivered. Um, I don't think he could have done a better job, to be quite honest with you. Um, the five years was definitely worth the wait. To be able to hear about Q's life of the past five years was so interesting. The content matter was strong. The features were well calculated. The production was so interesting and unpredictable. You look at Q's performances and all the types of different dynamic performances that he put into the album to keep you engaged from you know 1 to 18. You look at how many songs you're getting out of this and all of the big career highlights. There's nothing else you could want more from a Schoolboy Q album, if I'm being honest with you. It exceeded my expectations. Yeah. This album exceeded my expectations. I'm going to be as much... I have super high standards for Schoolboy Q and like it even just exceeded that. So I'm extremely happy with this. Incredible listening experience from yeah. Q. And um, I think it's a top three album in his catalog. I think that when you're looking at this album, there's not too many flaws to pick away from it. And again, he just achieved a great balancing act. It was maybe, you know, arguably maybe his best curated album in terms of like something that's going to appeal to a lot of his fan base and a lot of new listeners that are it just getting into him. It was curated almost like a blank face, to be to be honest with you. Where Similarly. it's like that there's so much duality in like what you could get out of the track list, you know. So um, I'm super happy with it. Overall rating, Lou. Amazing. amazing album, man. First amazing of 2024. There we go. Guys, bu bu I am Bucket happy. hat season, guys. Absolutely. There we go. Fuck yeah. But listen, guys, let us know how you feel about the album in the comments section. And if you're a Schoolboy Q fan, when did you start listening to Q? It's been an absolute honor to be able to do this album review. And guys, what album should we review next? Thank you so much for watching this, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.